So what I'm going to do now is basically um, ask the uh, cursor composer to take the comment that I had written in the Jupyter file and basically generate code to do all the things that I asked it to do. And you can see that in its uh, composer window, it's generating code. You can kind of see as it scrolls by that it seems to be pretty well written code. It's got doc strings. Uh, it's got type hints as I asked for. And so we'll let it finish generating this code. And then what we will do is copy it over into the notebook and run it and see how well it does. So it'll kind of give us a little description of everything that it did down there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a new code cell and then paste in the code that it generated. And then what I'm going to do is pull out the main execution block from all of the uh, imports and functions, put those in a separate cell, and then kind of clean up that code. And um, then once I've done that, I will go first restart my kernel just to make sure everything's clean. Um, and then run everything. And you can see that it loads the time series files, takes a, a moment to do that, and then it does the cross-validation just as we asked for. Now, what I didn't tell you is that it took me a decent amount of time to get it to the point where it could run like that out of the box. And really, it came down to putting the right comments into the, uh, the description here at the top of the file. So what I had to do was figure out, for example, that I needed to tell it that um, the files are space delimited and have no header column because it initially was thinking that they were either, I think they were comma delimited. Um, I uh, also wanted a progress bar for the, um, uh, for the file loading. Um, and so I needed to tell it to do that. Um, for the loading of the uh, target, I also needed to tell it that it was tab delimited um, with a header column. And importantly, that the index was in the first column because it was initially looking in the wrong place or looking for a column called subject that didn't exist. Um, and another problem that it had was that um, some of the data points have missing values for the outcome variable. Um, and so um, initially it would just try to run the cost validation without taking uh, those into account and it would crash. And so we had to uh, tell it to actually remove those missing uh, data points before uh, running the prediction model. And then finally needed to give it some details about um, what the model is going to look like. Initially, it was sort of coming up with its own name for the variable for the target. Um, so I had to tell it what to use there. Um, and tell it, you know, which other uh, which other features I wanted to, which other um, aspects of the model I wanted to use um, for the cross validation. And only after doing all this were we able to actually get it to run straight out of the box, like you saw uh, previously.